Well, hi everybody, it's Leanne Griff with tonight's Facebook Live. Tonight is Stamp With Me Live, and what that means is I gave you a little notice um, that we will be making a floating panel card today. So this is a different kind of mechanism on the front of your card. This is what we're gonna be making, a card just like this. You can use any size panel, as long as you can add some pieces of cardstock behind it to make it float. Still folds flat for mailing, just like a normal card, but there's a little surprise. So you may want to have something here um, beside it. Let me get my laptop synced up. So let me know you're here um, and if you're stamping. So I'm gonna get my, um, refresh my screen. That usually works. And here we are. Okay, so hi Carol, hi Marcia, welcome. First one's on tonight. Okay, we are live. Hi, Sharon. Thank you for joining us. And um, we're going to be making, it's basically a, a class that you can uh, follow along with and either create at the same time as I am or uh, make, maybe you'll watch now. A lot of people like to watch first and then create later. So I did share these measurements on uh, my Facebook page. Now that's Flower Bugs Ink Spot that I usually share them on. If you're following me on Flower Bugs Stamp and Share, you also need to follow me on Flower Bugs Ink Spot because that's where the videos go live. So if you're not getting notified when I'm live, you may have your notifications either turned off or maybe you're not following me. So please check that Flower Bugs Ink Spot if you wanna watch the live videos. Hi Linda, hi Lori, Trina, Karen, welcome. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my inspiration for this card. This is something I made a while back. I don't remember why, but I don't even know the name of this uh, suite or bundle, but um, uh, this is my first floating panel card. And on here, I have a die cut that's popped up with a few little dimensionals so it catches this. So when it stands up, it saves that little spot that it holds it in place. So it's a triangle basically. And then your panel still basically floats. So it makes that panel float are two little pieces of cardstock. It's kind of maybe hard to see that for you, but they're about one and a half inches, one and three quarter, it really doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter how wide they are either. If you have a heavy piece, you may want to have more than a half an inch. Uh, mine are about a half an inch, let's see, two strips by one and three quarters. This one may only be one and a half, um, but there's one on each side. So I'll kind of show you how that is, but that was my inspiration for this uh, class tonight. Okay, so who's stamping with me today? Who is going to, um, <laughs> you finally made it on a Monday, huh, Susan? Wonderful. Oh, you're in Fargo, Colleen. Hello, welcome. My family, my daughter and son-in-law and granddaughter live in Fargo. Okay, so measurements are here. If you are just tuning in, you didn't see these posted um, the other day, I am going, you can use these, take a screenshot if you want to. Um, I'm going to use the best day stamp set. I hadn't even inked it up before I started this card. So, um, so yeah, it's fun and it's a coloring card, but I also thought, why didn't I stamp this on designer paper and make the cupcake uh, colorful um, or printed? So I could stamp that right on another piece of printed paper. And so I may do that yet, but not today. So um, that's what, we're, what I'm going to use. All right, so my pieces. And I like to change colors just to see Oh, I'm sorry, you're not feeling well, Marsha. That's too bad. I hope that goes away. Oh, headaches can be just miserable. Luckily, I don't have them too often anymore. And they are hard to deal with when they're bad. So, um, getting back to the card, this is five and a half by eight and a half, and you score it at two and one eighth and four and one quarter. So it's basically a... Um, scored in half at that point. So you can even do that if you want to. So your designer paper, and I am using both of these are from the Dandy Designs, which is the celebration paper and celebration the last day is tomorrow. So how many of you are still putting in orders trying to catch up? <laughs> I'm gonna use this side, I think. This is Fresh Freesia. And this is five and a quarter by about two inches. Sometimes I cut it a little less than two, 
one and seven eighths. Um, but other times if I cut it at two, you see how this gap here is wider than the edge here. If you cut it at two, you don't see, it's not as wide there. So if you cut it at one and seven eighths, it's a little bit wider. So here I can narrow that up. So because the black is so obvious on this uh, fresh freesia. I could have even pushed it in a little bit so it's closer to even for some people so that are fussier. I won't name names, Lori, <laughs> now that you're watching. Okay, all right. So I do like to do a few things ahead of time, and I, um, but I did not stamp this. So we'll do that. I'm going to use the same little cap in the cupcake. I'm stamping on a, oh gosh, I did not write down the name of the dies. Contour, something contour. Oh, I'm sorry, Nancy, that it's not working for you. Um, maybe restart and get back in if it's not working. That's what I've heard other people do. I'm huffing on that just in case. It needs a little, I think my black ink is pretty well inked, but there we go. That's my memento, black memento ink that I'm stamping on. And while I have that out, I'm going to stamp the inside as well. I'll use the same birthday greeting. <laughs> yeah, I do know you a little bit well, Lori, after all these years. Okay, I have to get that straight. It's two sides to cardstock just in case. All right, you know, while I have this, I think I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the inside. So this stamp set has um, some fun accessories on it. And the first one I'm going to use is the little sparklers. And we'll stamp, let's see, twice here using fresh freesia. I have a feeling my ink was, eh, it's fine was not quite, or my stamp wasn't quite clean. That should be a little bit more purple. That, yeah, it'll be fine. Okay, now check that out. And when you stamp randomly like this, be sure that you rotate your stamp so they're not always stamped in the same place. So like that, every time you stamp. It does um, give a better impression in the overall effect if they're not all perpendicular to each other. Thanks for sharing already, Karen. I appreciate that. Now this is polished pink. Thought it would go well with the purple, the fresh freesia, which is going away. It's our in color that is um, supposed to be retiring. I hope it will be one of the colors that they bring back in the color refresh. You know, there will most likely be a color refresh this year uh, because we are getting a few old in colors back. Um, we're getting Pretty Peacock back and uh, Lost Lagoon. So that is exciting because those are great colors, which means I believe that's 99, I think 99% sure we're going to get a color refresh. Okay, so take your little strips and I didn't score them. You can score them if you want to. They're just little scraps of paper and they don't even have to be perfectly even. Um, just um, fold them in half. So whatever length you get, mine are about a half an inch by one and three quarters and fold them. Okay, so now you're going to add adhesive. That's a little bit much. You know what I'm gonna do is add this piece. I don't like to use so much that it oozes back on it or outside of it. So I'm gonna estimate the center. I'm not going to um, worry about being centered because nobody sees this. They can peek behind and then I'll add the gluey side <laughs> to that piece right there. So they're, you know, they're almost touching. They can be touching if they want to, but see how that is ready for our panel. So here's our panel. Now in this case, I added a really skinny piece of black between the fresh freesia and the white. So I thought that would highlight because it was a little bit, so let me show you how it would be if I didn't. I don't have another color I'm adding. I could have done yellow and I should have because I'm gonna color my cat yellow. But um, but yeah, so this is gonna go on here and that's gonna go on there. I'm gonna bring in some of my markers. I wasn't sure, I think I'm gonna try doing my cat gray. I'm gonna try it. 
I haven't practiced this. So actually, I, yeah, I'll just stamp like that. So always check what color. That's so dark. I just don't know if I can do gray. This is even darker. Yep, that's, that's smoky slate. Let me see what, well, that's better. The, the other end, it's so funny how the ends are so different on your uh, blends. I, whether it's from use, I always store my blends uh, sideways, horizontal, so they don't get one end of the ink or the fluid to the other, other end. But sometimes it seems like um, there's still a difference in each end, and I don't know why that is. But some colors are totally different in the same marker. So I'm just coloring him a light gray, and then I'm gonna try and add some accents in the darker gray. Blends are so easy to color with. Okay, so now I may switch to the other end to see how this goes. Put some highlights here. And, and then what you can do, if you wanna add like some stripes or something, I just don't even know where to start on stripes, but you can add in the same color that I, <laughs> I am so not an artist, that's why I stamp. No artistic talent whatsoever here. Maybe I can match colors, that's my talent. I'm good at matching colors. So we're gonna make the top of him a little bit darker. I don't know why, just to add some, some tones. See those little stripes I added? They're already gone. So maybe I should go with splotches. I'd like to do a tabby, but I don't know how to do that. We'll just add some random, random extra colors. Just for, so he's not so smooth because cat's fur, well, I do have a totally gray cat, but most cat's fur is not solid. Okay, you definitely want to add some fresh freesia. Um, to bring in some of these colors. So we will add some to the hat. And to the cupcake. I probably should have done the background first, now that I'm thinking about it. You always want to add your darker color. Well, I usually do last. I was thinking of doing yellow just for some brightness. Okay, and then I have a light pink because I want the nose pink. Maybe a little bit of the ear, not that you can tell. Okay, I'm probably boring you to heck <laughs> coloring. <laughs> Yeah, now this, oh, this was your first choice, huh? Now this one, yeah, this is a little lighter. So I'm going to color the rest of this. Just, I'm going to make it all purple, basically. What I like to do is do my edges, and then I can kind of go to town on the rest of it. And I don't really care if it goes over those dots because it's all a light purple. And I do believe I need a little brightness here. I should have had the balloon yellow. There we go. A little bit of alternate color. Okay, so this is going to be popped up. My dimensionals. So how many of you are stamping? I didn't see, um, I didn't see if anybody's stamping along with me tonight. Now you know, oh, I, was, I need to do door prize drawing for those who shared the explosion card. And I forgot about that. I had company for supper. My niece was here from Utah and um, she just left a little bit ago and I totally got discombobulated. So I will draw door prize drawing from last uh, month's, I guess you'd say, uh, stamp with me, which was the explosion card. And whoever shared will be in the door prize drawing. So we will, um, you'll be notified if you won a prize, if you shared. So this will be the same thing. The last um, Sunday of March is the last day to get in on the door prize drawing for making a floating panel card. Okay, so for those of you who are going to make one of these, isn't that a cute card? It's very soft. 
very subtle and I love how the black will pop up here. All right, so to make this, you just add some adhesive on your little strips and basically add your layer and press down and I can just pretty much center that, eyeball that, making sure it's straight and hold that for a few minutes. Are well, you gonna make one tomorrow, Susan? I hope so. I hope so. All right, and I will add maybe some edges here. So tomorrow I will be live again um, for my Tuesday live. If you're watching on YouTube later, I have a live every Tuesday morning and I do want to make a few things sparkly. This hat has to be sparkly for sure and maybe the polka dots. So I'm using our Wink of Stella. So tomorrow is the last day of celebration. So I cannot reiterate enough that if you either are not a demonstrator or you want to have a few things on your wish list, be sure to sign up and get the demonstrator deal right now. Um, we have added almost 20 people in our Flower Bugs group. It's been awesome. Um, so yeah, it's, we'd love to add more. <laughs> so if you are interested in getting the discount, it's really a great deal. Okay, so I colored some yellow and some purple here. So I'm gonna alternate. Um, and I did, these are just our regular clear rhinestones and I used some of our um, blends markers to color them. Now when I do that, I try and use the, uh, I'll show you the end. So the end I use is the, sh the bullet tip end, which does not ruin the tip. This is a nice hard end. If you are using the brush tip, you can ruin that tip so it won't be sharp anymore. And so I, this is how I usually start out because it's so much easier to color rhinestones with this tip. But you know, after a while you end up ruining them and they're like, why aren't they sharp anymore? So please use the bullet tip if you want to keep your blends um, working well for a while. So there is my card. Isn't it cute? Which one do you like better? The Fresh Freesia or the uh, Fresh Freesia or the Mango and Polished Pink? Those are the two options that I did today or that I'm sharing today. So it's a cute set. So if you just join in, I'm using the Best Day stamp set to make these cards and I use blends markers. And the this, this doesn't close or stay open quite as well as if you are going to, this one I used a die cut. This is my inspiration for today's card. It's a card that I made oh, probably over a year ago. And I save fun fold cards like this for inspiration. I have a little box uh, full of cards. But anyway, a die cut, something popped up. I just didn't, I wasn't, I wanted to use just this set and I didn't want to die cut anything else or, put, or stamp or uh, punch out anything. So I decided to try the Rhinestones and they work, but not as well as this. This actually has something to catch on where this kind of just happens to catch on that. <laughs> so that's my little tip for, for the catch mechanism. And it does stand up fine, but it does not catch per se because it's just on a rhinestone. It just does not catch. Now, if you're having trouble with it staying closed, be sure that you use your bone folder well on your your center fold on the front and it does tend to stay closed a little bit better well, and i have to do it on this side too so bone folding does make a difference on your cards there now see it's staying just where i want it because i kind of broke the fibers up a little bit so so you like the left one susan all right and mango the mango for guys well that one has some pink in it are you sure linda <laughs> Oh, I know Fresh Freesia. I just hope it does not go away. That and Soft Succulent are my favorite colors of this uh, set of in colors. I'm praying that it will come back and not go away. So um, I did want to share, I have live tomorrow, but I thought I'd share something I got in the mail today. So this was from Stampin' Up! And I opened it and it says, Dear Leanne, congratulations on reaching yet another milestone 1.4 million in career sales is incredible and so are you. Thank you for sharing your creativity, energy, and passion with others. You've made a difference to others and for me. Thanks for being a part of the family, Sarah. 
So that's from Sarah Douglas, the CEO of Stampin' Up. So when you reach a milestone, um, they usually send you a card and I, I got the 1.4 million, I think it was last month. So it's wonderful to, to receive the recognition from Stampin' Up in a card. And a lot of times I got a text from Chad and I get a phone call from um, one of the, the um, leaders. Uh, oh, what do they call themselves? Anyway. Oh, thanks, Lori. Appreciate that. Um, okay, I think I'm done. So I will post, make a post in my Stamp and Share group. Now, that's my customer group, Stamp, Flower Bug Stamp and Share. And, oh, happy anniversary, Colleen. Uh, three years, that's awesome. Um, anyway, I will make a post for Stamp and Share. And I would encourage you, highly encourage you to share what you've made with this floating panel technique. And then you'll be in the door prize drawing for a prize. Now you have to do that before the last Sunday of March. I don't have the date on me, so I can't tell you what the date is. Um, but that's when I will draw a prize. So I should have done it last night. But like I said, it's been, it's been a, a, an interesting week. Um, I lost a real good friend of mine on Saturday, and she was a huge part of my Stampin' Up! world, and so a lot of us are very sad. It's um, been a tough, tough couple of days um, losing a good stamping friend. So anyway, I'm, I'm gonna do my best to get past it. She would want me to keep going, because she was, a, you may have recognized her name, Marilyn Roll. She was on here for all my, all my lives. Very, very good support, very good friend, best, kindest woman ever you could ever meet. So, so yeah, it's been a tough weekend for a lot of us. Um, anyway, um, yep, be sure to share your floating panel card and you'll get in the door prize drawing. And I will see some of you tomorrow at 11 o'clock central time is for my weekly Tuesday. And if you're watching on YouTube after I upload this, um, be sure you follow me either on Facebook or on YouTube and you should be able to see it all. Okay, all right. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining me. I appreciate you. Thank you. Carol and Karen, I appreciate that, and Susan. Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.